package. All right, and I think this was about uh, 15 bucks shipped. Um, just a little mini haul for the Thor movie figures. Um, I'd never actually picked up any of the Thor movie figures. And um, I had thought about getting the Frost Giants before. I had seen like four of them in store one time, so I was going to pick them all up. But I decided to pass up because I heard bad things about the Thor figures. And I always wanted to get a Thor just to get a movie Thor. And the Odin looked pretty nice. Um, so I just saw this for, like I said, 15 bucks shipped on eBay. So I got the, I think it was the Wave 1 uh, movie Thor. And he's actually got a really decent head sculpt and paint job. Because the guy that I bought it from was actually a collector. And uh, so that was nice. Um, this Odin, which also has a pretty good paint job. I've seen some with the really shitty paint job on that uh, uh, eye patch. Um, this really kind of crappy Wave 1 Loki. Uh, he's not a very good figure. He was the low point of this haul. I got it mostly for Odin and Thor. Then what turned out to be the high point was these Frost Giants, which I knew these fr the Frost Giant was going to be cool. Like, I heard from people that he was a pretty decent figure. I just never really wanted to pick him up because he wasn't really in scale. So, now I'm thinking I might go pick up, like, four or five of them, get a little mini army of Frost Giants. Although they're not really giants, they're still, I think they're okay. And um, I, I'm really loving these accessories they come with. He's got the little ice mallet or whatever the fuck it's called. He's got this ice blade, which is really oversized, but also it's kind of cool. And he's got this oversized helmet, which is too big for his head, but whatever. Um, Thor, he comes with his hammer. He comes with this gimmicky blade, which when you press the button, for some reason, only one of mine goes flying off. And then the solo part comes off, which isn't really important. Then with Loki, um, Loki came with these two little knives, which he's never used and probably never will. Um, and he came with this gimmick, which this thing pops off, or pops open, and then he comes with these dual tumfas, which, uh, if you've ever played Soul Calibur, then you'll know what tumfas are, because, uh, that's where I first learned about tumfas, from Soul Calibur, uh, I can't remember what the chick's name was that used them, but she was Talon, she was really fucking good, especially in Soul Calibur 2, but moving on from that, and then, um, Odin, who was pretty freaking dope. Uh, he came with two gimmicky weapons, which was kind of strange. He came with this sword, which for some reason pops open like this. And then separates into three like this, which I don't know how you would use this in battle, but whatever. And then he came with a shield, which has spikes on it. Like, I think this is actually a decent gimmick, considering, like, I wouldn't be surprised to see Odin with this. You know what I mean? I just wouldn't. Um, so yeah, and Thor and Odin, both of their capes are removable. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Hopefully these guys can move into my collection. At least the Thor from my movie collection. The Odin may be for just regular. He could be a regular Odin. And then the Frost Giant. All right, and I finally went to the comic shop. And although there was more that I could have gotten, I only grabbed four comics today. 
Um, just because I, I was sick these past, like, two days, and I'm going to be sick again tomorrow. I'm going to miss school tomorrow. <coughs> but, uh, so we went to the comic shop, and I got my learner's permit today, so I drove home from there. So that was pretty cool, I guess. I think I'm a pretty good driver. <laughs> but anyway, um, got Fear Itself, Uncanny X-Force, which this was pretty good. Um, I just wanted to show one pretty funny thing that happened in it. Uh, I gotta search for it. Ah, here it is. Alright, um... So they're all, like, separating to take out these, like, robot human purifier things. It's like Wolverine jumps out. And he slashes it in half. Deadpool's like, damn, that looks like fun. Me next. So then he jumps out. And he misses completely and just smashes it into the ground. So I thought that was pretty funny. So, um, this one was pretty good. I kind of like the Fear Itself tie-in for Uncanny X-Force. Um, so yeah, that's book two of three. And then Fear Itself Deadpool, book three of three I've got. And, um, I liked it. I thought it was pretty funny. Pretty good. Uh, and I probably should have picked up some Deadpool comics. Just because, uh, Deadpool's freaking funny. But, anyway, yeah. Um, picked up X-Men Schism, issue 3 of 5. Now, while I was at the con, I saw issues 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of Schism there. But, I decided to pass up on them and just get them at distributor level when they came out. So, issue 3 is the most recent one out, I'm pretty sure. It's the most recent one my comic shop had. And that was pretty good, um... You kind of see Wolverine and Cyclops getting a little pissed at each other. So, <clears throat> as some of you guys know, Schism's kind of a lead into who's going to be the next leader of the X-Men. Cyclops or Wolverine. Um, I'm kind of rooting for Wolverine. Because, like, eh, I don't really know. But whatever. And then I got Uncanny X-Force issue 13. Which they're still in the Age of Apocalypse universe. And freaking Age of Apocalypse Wolverine is becoming Apocalypse in that world. So basically what happened in this is they got the Life Seed. And uh, they teleported back home. But <clears throat> when they got home there's like all these. Well, basically all these bad guys here. And that, I'm assuming, is going to be Archangel. I can't really tell, though. Because, like, they purposely covered up his face and all that. And those don't exactly look like Archangel's wings. But he's got the Apocalypse belt. So I'm like, who could it be? You know what I mean? And, like, who's here? Uh, you got him. You got Dark Beast. You got this guy who was one of the... Horseman of Apocalypse, you got that guy who was a Horseman of Apocalypse, that chick who was a Horseman of Apocalypse, so yeah, and then I'm guessing that's Nemesis, I've never really seen Nemesis in the comics, but um, I'm guessing that's Nemesis, so yeah, comic pickups were pretty good, oh, man, I've been meaning to get this for a minute, but uh, uh, I just kind of been putting off. Just because I didn't have the, really the time to. Because I don't really buy shit off iTunes that often. But I finally got Bug Nice ACBA theme song. This is good stuff, bro. Uh, keep it going, Bug. Keep it going. Mad props, man. You know, I was just talking about Webhead uh, a minute ago. And uh came out with his new show, Wednesdays with Webs. Really happy to see this. Uh, it's another thing, like one of the commenters had said, uh, it's another thing like chilling with Red Hulk 80, MTIT, Super Sundays, Beyond the Scenes with Slings, and now there's Wednesdays with Webs. Plus, for anyone that's watching my channel, you got Practice Makes Perfect. So you got all these different shows that come out mostly weekly. See, I'm trying to get it down to a schedule uh, where I can do it weekly, but... Things are a little hectic because I'm still in school and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I try my best. And while I'm here. 
Dude, this Avengers TV show is super sick. I just now hopped on it on Netflix, but you gotta listen to this intro. I love this song. I don't know what it is. I just love the beginning of that song. But anyway, I just got into it on Netflix. I've been missing out on this show. This show's freaking awesome. Uh, I'm on like episode 7 or 8 right now. Um, I think 8, yeah. Because episode 7 is when they actually become the Avengers. Um, and I think it's a really great show. Uh, the animation is okay. Like, it could be cooler animation, but uh, it's still pretty good animation. And, like, I really like the show. I just do. It's really good. You guys should definitely watch it. Uh, if you can, watch it on Netflix. Because they have the entire first season right now, which is like 26 or 28 episodes. Something like that. So, yeah. Package. All right, and here's what was in that package. Might not look like much, and you guys probably can't see it all that well. But, um, what it is is, uh, basically I put, I can put my, uh, phone in here, because I'm using an iPhone as my camera, because, um, I also have a Mac, and, uh, none of my other cameras that I own, uh, work with Mac. Like, they're just uncompatible, and I can't get SD cards to work with my Mac either. And the iPhones actually got pretty good quality when it comes down to it. The only problem with them is uh, lighting. But <clears throat> anyway, this uh, I just slipped the phone into here, and then I could screw it into a tripod, and uh, I could do reviews and stuff, which I've been wanting to do reviews for a while. I just never really got to it um, because of, well, me not being able to hold it stabilized or anything like that. I did, like, film, like, I believe two reviews ever on my iPhone, and, uh, they never got uploaded just because they were in bad condition, uh, for stability, and lighting wasn't very good on them either, but, um, hopefully I'm gonna get my lighting together, and I'm gonna do some reviews with this thing, uh, so yeah, look forward to those, probably first thing I'm gonna review is my custom Luke Cage, or... I don't know, maybe like my Scarlet Spider or something like that. Maybe my cable. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, and this might not mean a lot to some of you guys, but uh, it's pretty sweet to me. Um, some of you might not know, there's a series called Marvel Legends Showdowns figure, figures. They were made by Toy Biz right before Toy Biz went out of, uh, or went bankrupt or whatever happened. Um, right before Hasbro took over, and it was basically like Toy Biz's version of Marvel Universe, and it's things like this, which is why Toy Biz went out of business. Um, they just packed so much awesomeness into the figures, but they didn't sell them for the price that they were paying. Um, so this is, they were like Marvel Universe, they were the size of Marvel Universe, they were like three and three quarter inches, and uh, they were really sweet, they were articulated better than the universe figures they were like mini marvel legends basically and this is the venom figure and uh i've been looking for a good venom and this is like the only really good venom figure that came in three and three quarter inches this is a picture of it from uh marvelous uh marvelous news um he's a really sweet figure um he's not 100 percent comic accurate like his head sculpt's a little weird but i like it personally um this is probably the best Venom you're going to get at three and three quarter inches. There's that Venom that came in the Spider-Man line. And I just think he's kind of a joke of a figure, to be honest with you. And, uh, so yeah, I just want to get to the last picture they had in here. For those of you that don't know, the Marvel Legends Showdown figures, they kind of came with these bases similar to the Marvel Legends ones. And they were kind of like a board game, which is strange. But they were like really, really, really dope figures otherwise. I've got two other figures which uh, I'll just show to you right after this. But here he is with uh, a showdown Spider-Man. But I was happy to get him. I got him for nine fifty plus seven fifty shipping. So not the best of uh, prices. But um, yeah. I could have bid on him. He was seven. Uh, he was, what was it? Seven dollars otherwise for bidding. But I figured two dollars fifty cents. I didn't even want to risk going through the bidding factor, so I just bought it. So, yeah, look forward to that. That should be here next uh, next week.